For nearly four decades, I've followed one model of development that has become my plumb line for all things related to public relations, recruitment, and fundraising. Today, I'm going to share with you that model and why you should be incorporating it into your development planning. Stay tuned to learn what's kept me focused for nearly 40 years. From day one in development, I learned that building a friend raising enterprise, which includes public relations, recruitment and fundraising, does not involve a haphazard or shotgun approach, but a very targeted rifle approach. It involves a model that moves an individual or couple from the point of no knowledge of the organization to a deep understanding and love for the organization and its mission, vision, and values. But to get someone to the point where they are completely sold out to your cause, it takes a total immersion into the workings of the organization. And it involves moving someone through a legitimate step-by-step -step process that resembles more of a marathon than a sprint, an approach that takes years just to move from one step to the next and may never be completed if done correctly. Hence, it takes great patience and understanding on your part as nonprofit leaders as we act as guides for those individuals, taking them through the process and not rushing them along the way. I'm excited to share that development model with you today. Step number one, new name. The first step assumes that someone enters the process as a new name or a prospect or suspect, although an individual can enter at any level or at any step. Generally, we are notified that person may or may not have an interest in our organization. We may get their name from something as sophisticated as a list broker or as simple as a pad of paper left at the back of a church meeting to collect names or interested individuals. A person is then sent a series of three letters over three months, introducing them to the organization. The first two letters typically work up to a point when an ask is made, but a prospect may get initial appeal right from the beginning. The most frequent mistake made is an organization will just take a new name and dump that person into a direct mail cycle and a person will get a regular appeal for the rest of their life. It is a proven fact that if a person doesn't respond within the first 90 days of getting introduced to us, they'll likely never give. Don't fall into the trap of mailing to someone forever. Cut your losses and move on. Purge that name from your list. Step number two, new donor. Once someone moves from being a new name to a new donor, they enter a process which gives them another series of three letters over three months. These next three letters introduce them to the organization from the standpoint of now being a family member. They're welcomed in the family and introduced to all the benefits of membership, such as regular communication, newsletters, letters sharing opportunities to change a life or impact the world for the better. If someone enters in at a level of a thousand or more, then benefits of membership may include phone calls or visits. Remember, it's important not to make the same mistake that's made in the new names and dump someone into a direct mail cycle once they have given a first gift. Be sure to court the new donor just like you would a personal romance relationship. Treat the new donor in a special manner. Step number three, second gift. Oftentimes, leaders incorrectly believe that the first gift received from a person or a couple is the most important gift received, when in reality, the second gift is the most important. Anyone, and you've probably seen this happen, can give you a gift to get you out of their office or to appease you, but the second gift shows that you're building loyalty. It's likely that you've bought a box of cookies from a Girl Scout at some point in your life, but if you're like most of the population and you received a follow-up letter two weeks later from the national office asking for a gift, you probably would throw that in the trash can. That's because that purchase of cookies did not build loyalty to the organization. It may have built loyalty to a flavor of cookie, but that's about it. The same happens with your organization. A first gift doesn't necessarily show loyalty. It's the second gift that does that. Now it's time to work the donor and the regular direct marketing mail cycle. Step number four, direct marketing. Direct marketing brings the broadest message to the largest number of people. Under the category of direct marketing is direct mail, letters presenting opportunities to give to programs or projects, newsletters, email marketing, and large-scale telemarketing. For all the criticism from people who hate getting junk mail from organizations, direct mail is still the most effective way to reach the masses. 
A good direct mail letter usually has a response rate of between 2 and 5%, and prospect or new name or new donor acquisition mailings have a 5% response rate, but hopefully will net a gain over the life of a donor. The typical direct mail or email marketing cycle is 12 to 14 times per year, although a lot of organizations have opted for a quarterly cycle, but mostly due to the high cost of production. The average direct mail donation is $15, and the average frequency of gifts is two to three times per year. Step number five, core donor partner. There are individuals, couples, who have increased their frequency enough, approaching six to eight times per year, that they qualify to be a core or monthly donor or partner. These individuals or couples are either introduced to the opportunity to participate or are automatically enrolled in a monthly giving club. The typical monthly gift is between $15 and $83. Club membership includes at a minimum increase in communication and may include gifts and other special inside information or opportunities to attend events, get discounts on resources, or something valuable. Most, if not all, these include communication via mail or email, but include phone calls. Step number six, key or middle donor partner. A key or middle donor partner is focused mostly on individuals or couples who give one to three times per year and generally include anyone who gives a largest single gift of between $1,000 and $499 per year or in a 12-month period of time. This would include all the same elements that are sent in the direct mail effort, but from a personalized perspective. Where a direct mail letter will almost certainly include a non-personal salutation of dear friend, the same letter to a key middle partner would include a personalized salutation of dear Mr. and Mrs. Jones or dear Fred and Mary. And where a direct mail letter might be printed front and back on a single sheet of paper, this letter would be two pages and printed only on one side. But in addition to the personalized letters and email marketing, this would include a targeted strategy that includes regular and frequent phone calls to donors and partners. This would be an in-house phone calling strategy from full or part-time staff or volunteers versus a telemarketing company. The minimum calls per year would be three and the high would be 12. These calls don't include an appeal or opportunity to give. Calls in between appeals can include reports on the use of funds, the impact made or outcome of the program or effort on an individual or group. For faith-based organizations, these conversations can include requests for prayer. Step number seven, major partner or donor. When an individual or couple moves into this category, they have truly stepped into another level of cultivation. The typical major donor partner is giving one or more largest single gifts of 5,000 and up to 999. The dollar level or category varies depending on the size of the organization. Some may see $1,000 as a major gift, while others may see 10,000 as a major gift. What I'm sharing is the average of most organizations. Those moving into this category would receive the same personalized email letters and email marketing, but in addition to the added phone calls, this person would receive visits from a personalized representative of your organization. At a minimum, someone in this category would be contacted three times a year and in best case scenario would receive three notes, emails, three phone calls, and three visits in a single year. I refer to that as the 333 strategy. Step number eight, mega donor or partner. When someone gives a single gift of 10000 or more, they move into a different stratosphere of giving. Granted, there are very large organizations whose mid-level or even lower level donors give 10000 and there are also billionaires who tip their mail carrier 10000 at Christmas, but most organizations, 10000 is the beginning of other level giving. A mega donor or partner, in most cases, sees your organization as their top priority and sees what you do of such great value that they direct a majority of their giving or donations your way. A mega donor wants to be involved in your organization at a greater level and shows that interest in their giving. Help them to see their investment is important and help them to feel like they are owners or significant investors in your organization. Individuals who have the giving capacity to be a major or mega donor also have an interest in starting up foundations to better facilitate their giving and also have an interest in maximizing future donations through plan giving and estate planning. Step number nine, cross-penetrated strategies. There are income generating activities that span various giving levels and categories and those activities include vision events or athons, honorariums or memorials and publications. All can be used to expose and immerse donors' partners in the mission and vision of your organization. Overall, this model incorporates a win, 
keep and lift strategy whereby an individual or couple is one to your cause, kept up through cultivation and lifted to a higher level of giving. This win, keep and lift strategy should be the cornerstone for all your development efforts. As I mentioned in the beginning, the development model should be seen as your plumb line or North Star for all of your efforts. When someone comes to you with a new plan or strategy for how you should be raising money differently or better, you can always take that idea and weigh it against the development model. Chances are you'll see very quickly whether that new strategy either enhances the development model or takes you in a very different direction. If it's a different direction, you should thank them and run from there as quickly as possible. There are always new ideas, but this model has been proven to work for centuries. I hope you'll incorporate this into your development plan and embrace the tried and true methods involved. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like button and add a comment below if there's something you especially liked or if you've got any questions. If you aren't already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. And remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. We've really grown on Instagram and you can reach me at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, where we also have our Monday tips for the week and our Thursday development tips. Make sure you watch those as well as our funny fundraising and film videos. And also, if you need to reach me, do so at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com to email me. And as always, we are here to help you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.